Good morning. morning. And welcome to our service on this now, the 14th Sunday after Pentecost and our Rally Day Sunday. Uh, This morning, our Sunday school began. Next Sunday, coffee and conversation will begin with a uh, kind of a social fellowship activity as well as our catechism orientation. We have several announcements this morning, so we'll begin with Sharon Delp, who has a word about volunteers that are needed for the Oli Fair. Good morning. Uh, We still need people to serve at the food concession. Why serve? Uh, Our church would get a benefit of uh, financial amount for every hour people work if we have 10 or more people helping. A sign-up sheet is on the kiosk. Our only sign-up time will be Saturday, September 17th from 4.30 to 10, and you must serve three to four hours. I know that's long, and some people are not able to do the, to stand that long, and we understand that. There is no handling of money, and a parking voucher is included. All you do is report to the food concession as Spelk Fleetwood, St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church Fleetwood, when you sign up, sign in rather. Uh, You can serve food at the window, take tickets, and maybe you will be asked to flip burgers or fill up with ketchup and mustard. It's very easy. I've done it several times. Our neighbor, UCC, and other Lutheran church groups are scheduled to serve in that uh, that evening. Um, Any questions, call Sharon Delp, which is me. Um, There's pamphlets in the back if you need my phone number, and I'm also uh, in the book. Thank you. And Betty Buss uh, talking about our candidates tonight coming up this Thursday. Good morning. I'm here to invite you to a birthday party for a 245-year-old event. Uh, September 17, 1777, the Constitution was approved by our founding fathers. So that's a birthday coming up this week. And also we're having a candidates awareness night. We've invited the top 12 political candidates from the state to come to little old Fleetwood. I'm not sure how many we will get, but we're going to have a party and we're going to have a celebration. Uh, Seven o'clock this Thursday night here in the sanctuary. Uh, Come and, and, and I think you'll be in for some surprises. We also will have some refreshments Uh, We're not serving bologna, and you may hear a little bologna from some of the candidates, but come and make your decision that way. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. We want to thank the congregation um, for your generous donations of food and clothing for the New Journey uh, Community Outreach. The um, catechism uh, students, along with parents and some other helpers, packed up uh, several cartons this morning, and I see that additional supplies of uh, donations have come in um, as people came in for this service. So we thank you for that. This is part of our effort uh, as we participate in um, a nationwide ELCA emphasis on serving our communities through what we call God's work, our hands. Our uh, September special offering is for the Fleetwood Fire Company. You may not be aware, but our local fire company is the primary uh, protector of over 4,000 residents, 1,200 homes, three schools, seven churches, 12 large businesses, and numerous small companies, as well as serving as backup for other fire companies in our surrounding communities, providing fire, rescue, and EMS services. So we hope that you will consider them um, in your prayers with generous support. Coming up on September 25th, um, we will be hosting Kelly Schaefer, 
who is in charge of Fleetwood's 150th anniversary celebration, which takes place next year. She will be talking to us about some of the plans that are underway and also about how congregations like ours can participate. So she will be here again for coffee and conversation, which takes place at 9.15 each Sunday down in the social room. Also on the 25th, um, the um, Christmas shoebox collection, um, which is being led by um, um, uh, um, Becky, Becky Shade, um, thank you. Too much, uh, too much to remember this morning. Uh, we'll begin. You'll see that she set up a display table this morning, but um, that's just a kind of uh, a teaser. She will actually begin to disperse the, um, the boxes for you to fill on the 25th. And also on the 25th, you're invited to join the catechism students and their families to pick potatoes. Um, out at, uh, um, I believe we'll be out at, uh, I, well, I'm not sure where we're going to be, either Becker's Church or down in behind the university in Kutztown. We'll give you more information, but we'll be doing that from 1 until 4 o'clock, again on the 25th of this month. Finally, we will be holding a memorial service for Pastor Larry Delp, who passed away uh, a week ago, um, a member of our congregation and also a pastor who served in numerous capacities, numerous churches throughout Northeastern Pennsylvania Synod. Um, his service will be on Tuesday. There will be a visitation with the family from 9.30 to 11, with the service beginning at 11 a.m. Let us rise for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, let us together acknowledge our failure to love the world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice to love kindness and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction and show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. The grace, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us join Isaiah in sharing the peace. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord.
Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Now is the feast of the Lamb once slain, whose blood has freed and united us to be one great people of God. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Power and riches, wisdom and might, honor and glory to Christ forever. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. For God has come to dwell with us, to make us people of God, to make all things new. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. The Lord be with you. flowing with mercy and compassion you lead back to yourself all those who go astray preserve your people in your loving care that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your son jesus christ our savior and lord Good morning. The first lesson is from the 32nd chapter of Exodus, verses 7 through 14. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people? whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. Word of God, word of life. God. The second lesson is from the first chapter of 1 Timothy, verses 12 through 17. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly, formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me 
with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I receive mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Word of God, word of life. The gospel for today is told as recorded in the 15th chapter of Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to Jesus to listen to him. And the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling, saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Which one of you having a hundred sheep and losing one, would not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go and look for the one that was lost until he finds it. And when he finds it, he will lift it up on his shoulders and rejoice. And coming home, he will call together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having 10 silver coins, if she loses one, will not light the lamp, sweep the house, and search for it until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls together her friends and her neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there will be joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward. How are you guys doing this morning? You hurt your shoulder. Mm. Well, I hope that heals quickly. Well, I'm a little sad this morning because I lost my favorite cloth. And I really need to find it because, well, it's my really most favorite cross and I can't wear it. So I'm wondering if you'd help me look for it, because I think I lost it somewhere up here. So do you think you can, you can look for it? And, you know, maybe look around, see if you see it anywhere? Hmm? Oh, it can't be under there. That would be too obvious. Where do you think it is, Isaiah? No, 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 I, I, it's got to be harder to find. Natalie? You're Natalie, right? And you're Natalie. I, okay. I, my memory's working now. Natalie, what do you say? They all say it's under here. I really don't think it's under here. I think this is just a waste of time. Oh, my gosh, it is. Well, look at that. Isn't that a pretty cross? That's why I like it so much. 
Oh, man, I feel so good. I want to celebrate. You want to celebrate with me? Huh? You don't, you don't think this is worth celebrating? It is for me. Thanks, Isaiah. My man. Well, all right. So I intentionally put it under my stool. I didn't really lose it. But if I had lost it, I would search for it until I found it. What are some things that you might search for that if you lost them, you really, really would want to find it? Natalie? My phone. Your phone. Oh, yeah. Isaiah? Um, my favorite pillow. I always lose it. How can you lose a pillow? Now I know how. All right, Natalie, you have anything you can think of? Something's really special to you that if you lost it, you would just have to leave, search and search until you found it. All right, think about it. Andrew? I have a shark tooth that I lost once, and it was very hard to find. But you found it. How did you feel after you found it? Good. Good. Yeah. You think of something? No? Okay. So Jesus tells a parable this morning about, um, you know, one guy who has a hundred sheep and he loses one. And even that one is so precious to him that he has to go find it. Or a woman who loses some money. I think if we lost some money, uh, maybe we had it in our piggy bank or it was our allowance and we lost it. We would want to look for it until we found it. And when you find it, you're so relieved and even sometimes even, even happy. Jesus tells these stories because he's telling us that when we turn away from him, when we kind of stray like a lost sheep, he will go out and search for us and he will bring us back. He will... Yeah, you know, if, if we feel like maybe we've done something wrong and we want to hide from Jesus, Jesus wants us to know that he still loves us and he wants us to come back to him and, and, and be faithful that, that he will forgive us whatever we might have done wrong. So Jesus is talking about celebrating. Even if just one of us gets lost and God brings us back. All the angels in heaven celebrate. Even if it's Isaiah or Andrew or Natalie or Natalie or me. So what I thought today is that we would just celebrate the fact that no matter what, there's nothing in the world we can do that would turn Jesus off. There's nothing we can do to stop him from loving us a whole lot. And that's really something to celebrate. So we're going to invite the congregation to join us. We're going to sing a song. The, the song is familiar to us. If you want to turn to song number 650 in the blue hymn book, number 650, the title of the song is We Are Marching in the Light of God, except... We're going to change it. We're going to say we are partying in the light of God. All right? Can you all say that with me? We are partying in the light of God. All right? Let's rise. Let's stand and let's sing as Donna leads us. Just follow me. We are partying in the light of God. 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 We are partying, we are partying. Oh, we are partying in the light of God. We are partying, we are partying, oh, we are partying in the light of God. And now if you would each face the congregation, 
I want to share a prayer for you, for students, parents, and teachers. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, by now all of our schools are back in session. Teachers are teaching classrooms full of children and youth. Our Sunday school is back in session. Our catechism class will soon come back in session along with all of the activities that fill the fall season. And so today we pause to ask your blessing upon all our students that they may be eager and open to learning new things. Upon all our teachers that they may have the creativity, wisdom, and insight to teach well and engage their students. Upon our Sunday school teachers and our director of Christian education, Carol Cox, that our year here may be filled with enlightening stories of Jesus that help us to all learn and grow in Christ. And we pray for our, our parents who are now back into the mode of trying to balance schedules for sports and for music events, for other events in the community, for school events, as well as their own commitments. All of these things are part of our fall season, and we ask your guidance and your steadiness. Give us energy when we need it. Give us rest when our bodies desire it. And bless also our congregation as we join in support of our children and youth, of those who teach our youth, those who plan and lead activities for our youth, those who inspire us. May we all work together for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we rejoice today. Amen. Thank you. You guys may go back. Joy J. Moore is a professor of preaching at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota. And she recounts a story of a time recently when she was traveling in Pennsylvania and she got lost. And so as she was trying to reorient herself, she sold a sign for the Flight 93 Memorial in Western Pennsylvania. And she figured since she was that close, that she would go and visit that site. Now, as she approached the memorial, she fully expected to be filled with some amount of grief, remembering the lives of those souls that brought that plane down in an open field so it wouldn't end up flying into the White House or into some congested area where lives would be lost. But she was amazed by what actually happened by what she experienced. For there in that site has been erected a tower of chimes as part of the memorial. And on that day, a breeze was blowing. And so the chimes were, in a sense, singing. And it occurred to her that, in, in a sense, what she was hearing were the voices of those who had died when the plane crashed, those brave souls. In a sense, their voices, it came across to her as encouragement, as courage to face whatever might be next in her life. And so she left there being filled up as opposed to being feeling empty. Those lost voices now had a living sound in her mind and in her heart. Many miles away in New York City, an employee of the 9-11 Memorial Museum 
was bothered by the fact that of all the pictures of all the people that had died that were posted in the, in the museum, those who had died in western Pennsylvania, in Washington, D.C., and in New York, New York City, there were two people who had no pictures posted. And so he devoted many hours of his personal time trying to find the picture for one of these people. Now, it just so happened that this man had no living relatives. And so the employee went to Ancestry.com, and he found out where the man went to high school. And he thought, surely there'll be a yearbook with his picture in. He contacted the high school, but because the man had graduated so many years ago, they didn't have a copy of that yearbook. But the local history, history museum did. And so they took that picture and they produced it in such a way that it too could take its place on the wall, honoring and remembering all those people. The man now not only was there with a name, but with a picture. All right, it was a picture of him at 18, but it was his picture. He was an African-American gentleman who, like everyone else that day, went and showed up for his job, which was working in one of the cafeterias in one of the towers. Now, his picture was no longer lost, but found. Jesus tells these two parables, one about a lost sheep and one about a coin, to talk about what it means to God to be ever vigilant in keeping his flock, his people together. And in a sense, there's a little humor to each of them because in reality, I'm not sure there's too many shepherds that having lost one would leave the other 99, which he still has, that he would leave them, risk their safety to find the one. Now, understanding a woman who lost one silver coin, which in those days was very valuable, yeah, that makes sense. She'd want to sweep her house until she found it. But the point was, he was taking a jab again at the Pharisees. Because the Pharisees were grumbling because Jesus was having meals and having fun and fellowship with those that the Pharisees considered to be outside the temple and the synagogue. People who they deemed were not fit to be part of the inside group, part of the religious, the faithful. And so as Jesus often does, he goes to great lengths, kind of stretches the tail to point out just how generous the nature of God is. In a sense, we could say that what the Pharisees were saying to Jesus, why are you partying with sinners? And Jesus' response might be, because it's fun. Because I enjoy being around them. Because I enjoy pursuing the sinner and letting them know I still love them no matter what they've done or said or how they've acted that I'm not going to let them just disappear from my sight. And that's awfully good news for us. Paul puts it really clear in the letter that we read from this morning from 1 Timothy. At this point in Paul's life, he's in jail and will probably stay there until he dies. But he's writing to a young pastor named Timothy and advise, advising him, encouraging him. 
And he states the truth very clearly. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of which I, Paul, am the foremost. Paul knew how much damage he had done to the early church, to those early Christians who were forced by people like Paul to have to worship in in secret because Paul and others among the Pharisees would persecute them if they discovered they were worshiping Christ. And yet God used Paul. He took his zeal for persecuting Christians to being a zeal for proclaiming Christ. Even Paul, in his most rebellious acts against Christ, was considered one precious enough to be found and called. The point is, God will do anything to save sinners. I came across another story this week that I think really summarizes the nature of God vividly. It's about an old man who one day discovered as he was walking by a body of water, a scorpion, that somehow had gotten into the water and was having trouble staying afloat. And so the man kept trying to pick up the scorpion, to grab it out of the water, to put it on dry land. But each time his hand got near the scorpion, it stung him. It stung him once, twice, several times until his hand was greatly swollen and red and painful. Well, a young man happened to be passing by and and saw what the old man was doing. And he began to make fun of him, to mock him, saying, you're a fool. You're going to kill yourself trying to save that, that ugly, mean creature. But the man said, Just because it's in the nature of the scorpion to sting does not change my nature to save. Isn't that about God? Even though we may sting him with thoughts or words or actions that we may regret, God still keeps reaching out. God still keeps putting his hand on us. God still keeps gently turning us, bringing us back onto the path of life, no matter how many times we may sting him. Sometimes God is searching for us even before we even realize we're lost. You know, those times when you think you've done the right thing, and then when it backfires, you get to reflect, and you talk to some other people, and you begin to realize that maybe you were at fault, or at least part of the problem. The Pharisees grumbled and said, Jesus welcomes sinners and eats with them. Yeah, that's what Jesus does. He welcomes sinners. Sinners like you and me, and eats with us and rejoices when we have been found. Amen. This little mite of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus to our world to save us from our sins. Please strengthen the faith of all your believers and help us to increasingly live our lives following Christ's example. Help us to see the potential in all people to be living examples of Christ-like love and to pray for them. Finally, on this important day of remembrance, we thank you for the freedom we enjoy to worship freely and pray for those who cannot. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, thank you for all that you provided for us on this earth, the land, water, food, and air. Please enable us to use the resource you've given to glorify your name. Help us to be good stewards of the gifts you've provided and share our resources with those who are less fortunate. Help us to be ever thankful for all that you provide and humble. Hear our prayer. Guiding God, please give our world leaders solid judgment and strong leadership. Guide them to focus on our similarities rather than our differences and to strive for peace and understanding. Help us all to be mindful of the, all of the needs of all people and nations. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, bless our congregation at St. Paul's. We thank you for the faithful community we have, the friends we've developed around faith, and the good work that you inspire in us as a congregation. Thank you for our church leaders and lay people who extend our ministries beyond the walls of this church. Empower us to bravely invite others to hear your good news and to grow our church. Lord, in your mercy, Let us 
also remember our sisters and brothers in Great Britain as they mourn the death of their beloved queen who served them with a generous and gracious spirit for some 70 years. In these uncertain times, give us solace in your healing word and remind us that your heavenly home is without violence and war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayer. God of all those saints who have who came before us, we thank you for the growth and perseverance of your followers. We pray for your loved ones we've lost, that they are celebrated in heaven. We pray for the families of those who have recently lost loved ones and pray that they might find comfort, knowing that their loved ones are resting comfortably. We pray for all those who do not know you. Lord, that they hear your good news so they can rejoice in being found by your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these and all our prayers in the name of the shepherd and keeper of our lives, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing stands within our midst, may we share a sense of your love. The grains of wheat once gathered were gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let this be a foretaste of all that is to come when all creation shares this feast with you. As the grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we are joined as one by the Spirit of Christ, let us pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. For the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. The congregation may be seated, and those communing in the pew may commune at this time.
rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his peace. table you have refreshed our hearts with it in in this meal with bread for the journey give us your grace on the road we may we might serve our Lord our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our, our Lord amen, amen. Go in peace with Christ beside you.